Tonight, deadly Hurricane Ian, one of the most powerful storms ever to hit the United States, roared into South Carolina, delivering a powerful second punch after walloping Florida. Heavy rains and winds crossed into North Carolina on Friday evening. Governor Roy Cooper warned residents to be vigilant. Listen to your local officials and be aware of potential flooding. Stay indoors and off the roads if you possibly can. And if you have to go out, do not drive through water. It only takes a few inches to sweep a car away. We're seeing significant rainfall. As much as eight inches is expected in some places, along with strong winds. We're seeing storm surge flooding along our coast, and flash floods are possible across the state. And we may see some isolated tornadoes as well. And the state of emergency that I declared on Wednesday remains in effect. The National Hurricane Center said Ian made landfall near, or landfall near Georgetown, South Carolina as a Category 1 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 140 kilometers per hour. It was later downgraded to a post-tropical cyclone, but the National Hurricane Center said Friday evening that Ian is bringing heavy rains, flash flooding, and high winds to both South Carolina and North Carolina. Nearly half a million customers were without power according to tracking website poweroutage.us as a weekend Ian nevertheless lashed the states. We now go to Florida where it has already felt Hurricane Ian's wrath and is still scrambling to save lives. Melissa Potas reports from Orlando, Florida. More than 24 hours after Hurricane Ian pummeled through Central Florida as a tropical storm, communities continue to deal with the aftermath. I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't know I was like going to lose everything. We're trying to salvage what we can. This is HNS Marina. We took the leap of faith to move down here in January from Wisconsin, and it was beautiful all the way up to what a few days ago. And we never, obviously, we're in a hurricane. And our home is okay and our family here, my son and my husband and everyone's okay here. We just lost everything in our business. According to Orlando City Mayor Buddy Dyer, Orlando experienced historic flooding with many areas reaching 14 inches above normal levels. And we are still feeling the impacts. Um, the city has received historic flooding um, in excess of 14 inches of water and unfortunately the only way the flooding is going to go down is to recede naturally. If you can stay home, do it. Stay there. If your home is flooded and you can safely self-evacuate to a shelter, please do that. But I can't stress enough how important it is to shelter in place. The storm and its impacts are going to continue to be with us. Orlando Fire and Police Departments continue to assess flooding and have been completing residential rescues as needed. Orange County public school officials began assessing OCPS schools and facilities for damage with the goal of reopening all schools on Monday, October 3rd. In Osceola County, residents are encouraged to continue to shelter in place and to avoid venturing out on roadways unless necessary. Because of extreme flooding in low-lying and flood-prone areas, the city of Kissimmee has issued a mandatory curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. until further notice. At this time, more than 1.8 million customers across the state remain without power. Orlando International Airport has resumed flight operations. However, passengers are encouraged to contact their specific airline before coming to the airport. While communities continue to clean up debris and damage from Hurricane Ian, President Biden approved Governor Ron DeSantis' request to grant a major disaster declaration for all 67 counties. This allows for immediate federal funding for the state to shelter people and provide other essential support. By approving it early, ahead of the storm's landfall in South Carolina, we can get some. And as you all know, the situation in Florida is far more devastating. We're just beginning to see the scale of that destruction. It's likely to rank among the worst of the nations and the worst in the nation's history. You have all seen, the tel seen on television, homes and property wiped out, it's going to take months, years to rebuild. 
And our hearts go out to all those folks whose lives have been absolutely devastated by this storm. So Americans, just imagine yourself in that situation. Water rising, walls collapsing, streets turned literally into rivers, charter boats on top of automobiles, watching the home and the community work so used to work so hard to establish, literally washed away. Melissa Potas, Orlando, Florida, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times.